disengaging and re-engaging. Uh, I just don't see it going down, but go. Off spawn, 5-2-1 yeah, versus Wolves. Who do you take this for this uh, one, sir? I'm going to say Wolves. Uh, no bias. I think they might have a chance here. They've been building out their energy on Tessa. I saw her actually having two uh, armor patterns off of there, but I'm not sure if that was just because quick loot or she just went the energy path. Kayla in her fight over the Grizzly Rise, though. Zhao Q checking to try to avoid this push coming out from QGG as well as with 17 Ness. And Zhao Q not being able to re uh, reposition is now going to find the opportunity of doing so, Raven. I think, honestly, right then and there, QGG is just making this work for his magic. He hasn't used F3 until now to make sure the code confirmation was there. And he finds that elimination from the rip and just finding this early game kills and i think raven that qdg just made sure that, that this was his fight to kind of honor until that tessa enchant was just happening yeah the tessa is such a critical component of all spawn fpx uh quirky doing such a wonderful job returning that pressure changing the tides of that battle able to find that nice tessa ultimate now going over to gg versus jjh who is going to be king of the north jjh a force to be reckoned with with their macro right now but the goats lxm gg with fighting them off now the moonbane is going to be coming out can they hold them down it looks like gg's able to get to the edge right now chilling godlay though leading the charge on the monk on the transformer trying to get in there lxm in the back line on the yodo able to surround and absolutely cooked jjh even though they have the moonbane advantage they fall into the trap of gg the fade back able to get a nice juggle on a god like one person down but gg is going to trade out 2v2 situation who is going to take it 330 with a ton of pressure going out jjh truly going back into the moonbane keeping safe right now is going to take a giant shot truly going to make his way further in close fight right now great job from both of these teams with the moonbane timing and the fade away from gg now jjh is gonna invest that yushan on 330 going max range trying to make his way up the wall delay wake up able to dodge out great peel coming out from the farrier close fight from these two evenly matched yushan gonna be denied by these trees from 330 but jjh working their way slowly back in but in the distance we see fpx lurking on that attack on titan we got a bunch of juicy titans here sir ready to go yeah big time and it was crazy we was talking about spawns from early on uh, but before that, a third party coming in here. <laughs> As it came through, JJH is able to have all three teammates in one vicinity at the moment. FPX comes out here for that third party and trying to lock down this team and noticing where it comes through. The Tian Hai coming up from Godly as it comes through the F3 from the Wu Chen as Jeff Q is able to try to keep his team away from that pressure. He gets frozen. Godly is in the, in the position of getting frozen because of the ice butterflies, if I'm not mistaken, but everything coming into the place. Jiao Q still has ultimate available to get his team out. For this third party, they can go in and go out. And you can see Water was able to catch off of that grab. She was getting eliminated. Flames is at one HP. And you know, the point I was trying to make earlier, looking for this chance is, is that JJH spawned onto GG. We saw GG were looking for economy spawns since their first round, Raven, and they were able to look for it, but JJH is hunting, right? They find this double grab coming off, and then, of course, Godly is finding these soul blooms to be able to be obtained. He's still trying to look for this res, and Corky just looking for this Tessa enchant. Corky just keeping this in the 1v1 vicinity of, of, of action, and we can see Jacques Hugh is actually looking to salt, and not say salty res, right? They're looking to optimally get themselves back to the game, Raven, even if it cost them that latter half positions of being able to reset for the later ends of the game. Sometimes salty is better than sweet, you know? We just, we gotta run it back. We gotta make sure that we secure the kill. Well, coming, flying back, and taking those fights next to res is a big part of 30 part, third partying, and especially when you're picking about Transformers, you don't want them to let them get, uh, get going. Cannonball, traditional Transformers. Cannonball is basically the 2024 Transformers. It mm -hmm. took the place, denying those monks because of the Yodo and Faria, the ability of that one-two punch, pushing monks out into the open, but with a 20% damage reduction coming in to play with the new glyph system, monks were seeing that rise of that defensive play that very slow methodical double crab team play uh composition coming out and the only counter to that is that super fast place super high execution uh high risk high reward f2 silence not that v3 silence um and we're, we'll probably see that phase out as we go on but drg this is one of the compositions i was excited to see serve uh when you said akos <laughs> and you sean and justina i was like that sounds like a fun rank comp i'm gonna try that out if it's working at this the highest level that's definitely gonna work in an na immortal war lobby now we're seeing another variation of this one matari and zai also gonna be trying this one out drg going at it versus wbg's 
Maiga and Sleepwalker now can they survive this there's a lot of terrain to be working with right now it looks like WFC is going to be probing looking for the ambush play but WBG probing for weakness realizing this team is good to go isn't going to commit to this situation but Akos, Zai, Matari which one do you, you want to play in this composition sir oh I'm a Matari main day one with Viper but you know in this case Matari's <laughs> going to be with the person I choose and uh it's great to see how it can work off the only thing I'm having issues with not say issues with the v3 but one of the cons is that out of the three ultimates you know besides you know we're not we're not gonna talk about v2 uh but it does have a, a 12 second duration so you have to be very considerate about how much time you're in that ultimate form that ensure backstabs of timing it with your teammates if you're going to use it on the offensive pre uh, pressure of coming through and you know zai with it with the comet right she's able to get that f3 to come out here she has great value off of that alone right so you're just going to use it for the utility great that's the aspect we can see zem coming out here for that push against wbg the f2 silence was confirmed he's going to get the five second stun off of the ua shot and that's going to give by by a whole full set of eliminations but the f3 from the kurumi comes in and gives him a full advantage and you can see the parry off of ZK is not what he was hoping for because now that Wolves had expended the ultimates, I'm not sure if EG has a port ready to go here because you're going to see this turnaround come happen. If Baige doesn't get caught in the silence, he could have a forced ultimate to come out here. There it is. A shout gets caught to the enchant. There's going to be enough time. A Moonbane is dropped here as a result from uh, from this team. And if it comes to fruition, WBG have PRD to work off, Raven. And that third party opportunity is massive. Let's take a look and see, though. If it's just gonna work out here before this uh before this drive uh, happens to just drop into the ground. Yeah, DRG's timing here with the Moonbane going to Transformers. It's pretty tough when the Transformers click buttons. We got two Transformers, Juicy Health, plus a Kurumi, able to get them out of the sticky situation, but as they detransform, that's where the weakness comes in. We're seeing wolves coming in with the third party as well. Everyone's coming in, picking apart these transformers. They cannot survive the lobby descending upon them. WFC with the new composition, with the rank composition, coming in hot, trying to pick off, find these kills on the Viper teams at Wolves. XEM surgically picking out fights right now. OUG is going to take the fight with them. V3 is going to be invested from you. Now Wolves with the purple armor. Are they going to be able to survive the amount of damage and sounds coming out of They will fade the initial execution. Now you going for a ride from XEM, forcing OUG to back off. The King bails his team out of the situation. Will they be able to get out of our hard grapple out? Wolves knows that they have them against the ropes, but the hard grapple coming out, that max grapple distance paying off. Wolves, though, trying to cut them off, trying to push them into this zone wall going straight ahead but the backtrack from OUG veteran play from OUG cutting back the king making the noble sacrifice leading them on a wild goose chase across so his team can survive to fight another day but wolves hot on his heel looking for that red meat looking for that kill and JJH picking up two of the rebirth charms already bringing back their team so it's going to be tough if OUG is not able to survive this situation you still split off from his team but great job from OUG to bluff this no old zone letting wolves know that we are posted up showing this alpha body language as you makes his way down to the left great play coming out from them but Wolves at six, FPX at six, DRG at four. BBE finally have uh, having a big game. What do you think about BBE's performance so far in the league? Sir, so them being uh, with five to one, the two foreign teams to join the league. What do you think their performance and how do you think they'll be doing going into the actual finals of this first spring NVPL? I think BBE has been having better and better finals uh, so far between week one and week two, especially coming out from the scoring boards across the board uh, into these fights. And they have a great opportunity of actually catching that through for this uh, position for point value, even though the today, you know, it's kind of like you being on the seesaw. This has been their only first day of, you know, catching it through for the, uh, the third round for Hall Rock today. Uh, but we just saw those eliminations at FPX for climbing out DRG outside of the Romy Yang. That Spirit Wolves being high contention. We were talking about that earlier with the amount of direction that the Spirit Wolves can ensure because now we're going to see BBE inside of the Romy Yang up against what seems to be JDG. The Tumultual comes out here from Ivan. Ivan's going to have to put that pressure on hand because you're going to see JG, JDG finds himself a parry. Ivan's at a point where he has to be able to be uh, considerate about what this is going to, what's going to happen right here and there because JDG's Tutty is looking for those RMBs with those Fear and Blast, Raven. I think this is going to be a huge opportunity if Royce and she can look for it with the Fear and Blast after he lost his snack it's gonna be a 2v2 he gets caught into the parry again and again this is happening with the furin getting a dragon slayer furin blast in response 
Roishi, she's just trying to hold this one down. The lethal jab is confirmed, but I think right then and there, Ivan just being at this low enough position gets caught out there as a result from QGG's push from uh, from this point or from this uh, side of things. And as you can see, JDG actually had this in the bag, and that's just a confirmation kill set right there. Yeah, Roishi going for a ride right now, and JDG, just their focus fire is so crazy. Once they get a hit, they convert so much into their juggle. They don't let you breathe. They just hold your head underwater, suffocate you before you can take a breath. The second you poke your head out, you're back into a stagger. <laughs> you're back to taking tons of damage. Now on the outside, Wolves versus FPX V3. B1, it looks like, is going to be invested to Draco Storm, though, on water. Oh my goodness, I love that Draco Storm. It's just one instance where you can be a vulnerable character you can be that support character you can be that viper character and you can just lead the charge because you're practically unkillable it's such a freeing feeling especially with the new grapple distance and everything te is going to be backing off right now on the side bbe scaled out of their minds now te has the yang depletion three minutes and 40 seconds they need to eat a soul bloom coming out of yang and nice scale rush knocking roy he he away get out of here takeda Get your booty out of here. Now Han with the RB is gonna get a big chunky hit onto the Temi. Oh, and it's gonna be a little bit too late. The zipping fire fire burn denying a lot of the heal pickup for the Temi. And now TE with the Xiphon coming in hot, fighting against the more scaled BBE. Looking to peel for his teammates. LYD Matari trying to make his way out of here. Han on the Zai. Able to slow down this Takeda, making a ton of work. Now, Kurumi getting caught out. Now, has to be careful. The light attack with the chains coming out. LMB, RMB, F going to come out from TE. Great team play coming out from TE. They were in disadvantage, but they turned their weakness into a strength, luring BBE into a false sense of security, sir. That was a crazy F3 Zai coming out there. Uh, I think another thing else is that during that Temiol, just looking for the reposition into the sky gave Zai, Zai the full advantage. We are going to see this fight against FPX though, against Wolves. Wolves is getting some latter half amount of damage, but OGU is looking to try to be that one target to be able to lock down this team. The V3 comes out from uh, from water though, and as it's coming out here with that Draco Storm, SS is trying to look for those RMBs. It's coming off here, finds that range Tessa ultimate. Corky locking himself to try to go for the disenchant. He's looking to try to be in his 1v2 against SS and, you know, water. Uh, has to make sure that you, or, or rather the King and SS, are looking to try to get you back in while FPX is just looking to hunt this down. You can see, you know, hidden in the hidden in the grass. SS is just locking his position after that Wu-Tang from the King. Uh, the King gets caught to this enchant, though. This is a terrible position that he would want to rather let his teammates get that res off of, even with that Draco Storm. Luckily enough, though, we got FPX to pick up those eliminations, but there is still an opportunity for OUG to come back into this round because you can see SS is just looking to regroup and getting res on you. Mm, that delicious parry coming out with the nunny parry the one shot capability coming out for nunny it's not a two-hit parry just a nice big kick to the chest corky coming in hot close the distance traps the overhold release from his opponent able to pick it up now going back to see whether or not you is going to get res we as fpx we don't want you to get picked up over here mm -hmm. one of the strongest players in the game we got to make sure that he stays dead 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 now Deado. kla <laughs> Five seven. times dead. What an interesting stat during Vermillion's buff. Five two one making the way across with Yin and seeing this Wu Chen Matari Viper. Is that what yeah, I saw? Dude. This is a yeah. full full counter counter super safe. That's like we got a we got a designated driver and a designated driver for the sleepy driver. It's just <laughs> we got too so much safety on that team, sir. And they're passing by I-9, I-95, and they're like, are we there yet? No. You know, stay <laughs> or You know, I got my other homie right here to, uh, to take the break. And it's kind of weird. It's like, uh, it's, remember if you remember seeing in the past, um, we did see a play with, uh, with Matar, not Matar, with Wu Chen, Tian ha, uh, Wu Chen, Takeda, and the Zipping Ying. I like to call it the passive aggressive comp because if anything happens, if anyone wants to push that comp that they're trying to be passive and porting out, Takeda's there to kind of push them off into that, you know, to the realm of oblivion. But we have this replay coming out here from the first Romy Yang, QGG here on the Zai pick. I was calling this one out for uh, the kill eliminations. This is the Zai Matari Siphon comp uh, with it. This could be huge here for that uh, for that F3 and Hana goes down immediately. LYD coming out here for the gold focus and, you know, it just comes out here where this comp is, is to make that pressure to be held. You can see how much this team can't do anything about them if they catch them in the early ends. Even though TE here all have blue armor, 
Um, the amount of chances right then and there where the sustain came back, Raven, from the Matari, as much pressure that was coming out from both QGG and 17S, that was, let alone, the biggest sense of sustain on top of the V2's uh, zipping in, just keep this team alive against that comp. Yeah, that's where that's where the, the term siphon actually came from. It wasn't just because Takeda, when he shoves, he gets a, a little bit of health back on every shove. It was the fact that you combined it with Matari. It was basically a super heal. So at a point in the fight, even if you were winning the fight, all all that would happen is they would the whole team would go invisible, Takeda would ult, and instantly he'd go back to full health. So he was basically unkillable. He was an absolute juggernaut. It just turned out that Temi ended up being a better pick. Now we're gonna get I believe JDG versus GGG. JDG, super impressive with their fierce fast play style versus the rock, the unmovable objects. GG with their macro now. JDG Cicada dropping in against Cannon Bono. Cannon Bono was a counter to Siphon. What are we going to show us today? GG scaled out of the mines. Oh my goodness. Gold armor. Pharaoh is going to be put invested, slamming him against the wall. Now Takeda tap dodging his way. Kurumi coming out with the armor circle, able to pick him up. Can he survive the burst? Nice peel coming out from Temi with the Merciless, denying a lot of this pressure. And now, GG against the ropes. Temi ult's gonna be invested. Can Yodo get away from this situation? Yodo is forced to pop out, reducing the damage, getting a little bit of heal from each slash right now. But GG's 330 has to peel for his Yodo. Tons of pressure coming out onto him. Yushan doing his best to keep him alive and get a kill on the Temi as well. Takeda playing a little bit too defensive. Let's just Temi goes down 2v3 situation can they bring this back GG's Yushan armor is stripped Yodo giving up her back slam is gonna come in now Yodo down to 1 HP half health right now still a close fight with JDG Kurumi and Takeda doing their absolute breast but great job from GG able to get the nice flank play onto Takeda with that scale rush super safe damage coming out GG wants to close this out Comet's coming out with these great swords cleaving their way down and JG is gonna fall to the cannonball of GG Yo, Alex did some phenomenal work there with that pull sword. I'm gonna call him the MVP of that Roma Yang. <laughs> he had a, a great position and regrouping with his team as much as it came down to that uh, Takeda to try to work things out. The Cannonball comp just came out on top, uh, regardless. All right, it's just like the amount of passiveness that you can play as a Takeda is it's you can't afford to do so. You have to be very careful about what happens once the Weishan ults. Because what happens when the Weishan ults? What happens to the Fairy Shen ults? A lot of things can come out if you burn your ultimates too quickly or you don't use it at all. And that just came out to the ladder for Takeda's, and it has to be very mindful about what your team comp can do without you or rather what they can do and by their own but another fight happening here drg are trying to make their rounds again this is going to be the akko spatari into the Zyphen or with zai on top of this comp wz looking to back align this he's got draco storm for another minute or so from the spear roll that was obtained most likely because this is a really early uh you know timer from what's happening but godly uh, looking in the op opposite direction against xi in the zone Burning time for ultimate for XI. Flames is trying to lock him into this corner. Finds the grab though, and XI is just looking for a double grab. That's it. JJH just gets the double kill, and the White Tiger's prowess buff. <laughs> it really just deleted a lot of the HP bar. They got to be careful about this one. There it is. WFZ is healing back with the V2. He has no more ultimate readily available. We're gonna see how fast this comp can go down if one of the teammates are left alone, alone Raven. And you can see WFZ is just losing out his uh, his lifespan as much as he's healing back with the Draco Storm. The amount of pressure from these guys is just unbearable. Wow, man, and this is what I was saying before. Draco Storm only can lose. Only can lose to Monk Double Grab. And we're seeing DRG go down. And the Slayer of Rank Compositions is Transformers. And that's why Rank Compositions exist. Because no one wants to play Transformers within Rank. It's one of the harder compositions to play. It's one of the slower compositions to play. Everyone wants to play fast. But we're seeing a 1v3 situation because of this Draco Storm coming up. We have to invest in Yushan all This Akos is going crazy. Karumi all is going to come out. DRG's WFC will not go quietly into the night. We're fighting our way out of there. Kitty Claws are out. The Yushan is smacking this cat down trying to hose him down denying this pressure but that draco storm like i was saying before sir just gives you so much healing gives you so much aoe damage so you can just get through people's parries with the focus attacks the overholds coming in but wfz the as I say, this Draco Storm is going to run out and Godly is going to close this out with a last hit. But FZ, WFZ still wants to fight his way through it. Valiant effort from my man, almost taking that 1v3. And now dragging JJH to deep water that in that deep water, the great white, the sharks of macro are coming out. Team GG with the third party serve.
JJH is godly looking for those grabs in the middle of all this action. Of course, you can see how much is kind of coming to value because they lost flames. He's getting res. They're allowing Shu to go for this res because they didn't really think that the Tian Hai was going to be much of a threat, but they had to back off anyways. You don't want to risk it. It's kind of a greater or equal than the type situation. Godly getting caught to these bow shots. The third party coming in from 5 2 1 in the back line. I'm, I'm curious to see how that comp's going to work into this third party because we also have JDG in the background. GG just trying to lock down this fairy Shen Beacon as 3 3 is looking to repair and trying to confirm any some time, right? I need mean, some time, bro. It's like three seconds. That's all I need for repairs. JDG though have to see about who they want to lock down the enemies that already use ultimates or the possibility that there is an ultimate one or greater for the other enemy team and you can see how it comes out here jjh having that small window of opportunity for the res of flames he's probably at 70 percent rage right now if things happen raven where it's not his careful position with that rage gain it could cost the enemy team to fight and we can see that happen right now as jdg are getting the cleanup crew but five two one are trying to make this through for that third party into this play raven and with that viper matari wu chen comp yeah and going into this this 21 people alive game three like i was saying sir everyone is moving really really fast right now everyone's warming up the fiery engages no one is cautious anymore we're throwing caution to the wind we're fighting in zone everyone's looking for his own hold right now mercil is going to come out for jdg 521 wants to get active wants to get, get their game going 7.7 .7 points to their name they want to get aggressive to get these kills they want to get take their destiny to their own hands but they got kla lurking in the shadows again kla masters of that sneak attack sitting here looking for that great third party timing able to pick up a kill onto jjh but gg as well super scaled out of their mind we got gold armor on the ua shot interesting stuff coming out from gg to slow it down usually you see that the gold armor go on faria or yodo trading out those mechs but it's actually going on to ua shot interesting stuff coming out from gg then it makes sense to me though sir because as uh siphon one of the weaknesses is uh, going for the Yushan as he G transforms. JJH trying to survive in this situation though. Godly, last monk in. Can he show us some movement here, sir, and survive as the lobby descends upon him? It's kind of tough. He's got ultimate coming up here in 10%. Has to be careful about when he's, whether or not he's wanted to time it up there. But we see GG getting eliminations off of Godly as a result. So that lockdown with the F1 just came in the clutch. Uh, that armor swap going to the CGS, though, it's a good point to be brought up, right? Because Yoto Hime, she can be a ground unit. And if she does get caught out, uh, she needs that sustain to kind of keep her on the field. She has to utilize Bolt as a last second opportunity. If whether or not she's using F3 for the vulnerability, it gives her more time to kind of sustain now. But for Weishan, right, we also have to mention to this patch into season 12 that the armor increase did happen we are going to see armor increases from a baseline of each bar of armor being 250 up to 300 so from 1250 armor for gold armor it goes upwards to 1500 for that gold set which gives enough opportunity for the sustain to get that ultimate off and it depends right because if the way shot is alive for longer for the armor raven right it gives him an opportunity against vipers if we see we've been seeing more v, we've been seeing more v1 vipers make the rounds and that opposite opp uh, opposites attract moment gives him a mo uh, gives him enough time to get that v3 off it could save the team potentially <laughs> that's so funny to me seeing jdg's uh kiki inside the pot we see that in solos and yep. it, it looks really silly but it actually was a finesse that one of the solo players happened to fall into and you can't really range inside of it you also can't jump in and melee them it gives you an ability to sit back and actually reset and you see Kurumi use that perfectly now we're gonna get fbx versus te looks like he has zai activated right now with the ultimate corky has to be careful right now getting right next to the zai the burn damage is coming down now corky is going to fade away back off kla lurking in the outside again fpx doing a good job of icing out the pressure they are scaled to the moon with the gold armor said kla in the background happy to take this loot but te in a tough position last two alive fpx smelling the blood in the water coming in like sharks picking up the kill fpx consuming te's han slurping up all of the loot but on the outside kla finding that critical scale up getting to that power spike with qgg on the side gold armor gold spear these chains are going to be whipping this end game into submission serve yeah, QGG having this gold weapon, yeah, he's cooking. Uh, but if things come out to the, this, array, uh, this, you know, this, you know, this memberment of the team is that if he gets caught out, he's got hearts upper kick as well, right? So he confirms a silence. He can lock down to a De Dragon Slayer, Nedjaw's combo, you know, you know, two piece combo type ordeal. But this team has so many gold jades 
in their arsenal right now. Thunderstorm for QGG on top of the Martial Artist Will Hook form on top of the Heartstopper. Like, he's got a lot to work with in terms of that. But 17S, as well as with CXZ, we're going to see a Phoenix Blast hit the detach on CXZ, which is crazy. For the Matari jumping into the sky and then launching a vertical attack into hit the detach to lock down for QGG just to go bonk with an RMB. That's like. It's like 1,500 damage right there. And I think, honestly, Raven, if that comes out, that's where KLA can just snipe people. If they can catch that head to detach, it's kind of Jover. Uh, Please play. Yeah. Uh, ability combinations and Jade's combinations, really, really, really big. And, and like I was saying before, sir, third game, everyone is so super, super aggressive. They're ready to transition to Firefly Day as we close out the game three Hollerroth all of the attacking teams just absolutely going crazy the Zyphon getting tons of value the viper teams hit and run not letting any of these transformers get there we're not playing a slow slow game anymore we're on to the races we're off to the speed merciless coming out from OUG and still the goats doing super super well you on the viper again dominating uh this position dominating this league but they're at the two kills can they find a way to ladder up right now we still got gg absolutely crushing it with the cannonball with the transformers on the high ground swapping the gold armor to lxm got some gold pulsar it's gonna be a big damage coming out from this team but on the low ground v3 is gonna be invested from OUG moving over to take the high ground away from FPX, but they're going to get forced off right now down into the low ground. They having a tough time finding their footing and a nice dragon slayer or dragon roar coming out from Corky to pick off the king FPX showing their dominance. This is our side of the map, sir. <laughs> yeah, the zip code is 18542 for themselves because they're really locking in that location for the points. Corky in the back line is going to get caught out here from 17S uh, as it comes through, but GG. 330 find that bow shot right that that last hit off that end but this spear well is immensely great for everybody man because everyone can just hunt into the spear well they won't take range shots unless you're inside of it head the detach coming out from zxz like i said you find that head the detach your team can just look to lock it down between jade and skill selection qgg though just comments down here is that the is that is that what I think it is? Is that the shooting star? Because that's exactly what QGG <laughs> is playing for. He's trying to make it into a mythical event to be happening for everyone to just worry about whether or not it's happening or not. And he just has that set uh, set side for him. But you killing off the water here. This is where these last minute pushes happen, guys. This is where the ultimates come through here. And how much pressure can you do before it's where the point you can't catch up to that enemy team? Because, you know, KLA, Raven, they're making this happen for themselves. Yeah, the meteor is just coming in so big. Uh transitioning and taking the fight to these teams zai just being just as mobile as cicada but just being a tad bit more oppressive in this cqc this close combat court is qgg whipping smacking everyone in the submission in this end game right now fpx up to 16 kills right now where can anyone run and hide to on the high ground GG on the cannonball, willing to play this out, playing this slow until the end, up to nine kills. They want to secure this win and want to keep their Yushan with his last little bit of health. They don't want to go into that ulti low, mess around with that Zai, get messed up. 5 2 Yin's on the Viper, able to get a nice nuke on the KLA's QGG. Now making their way up on the high ground, we got the chopping blocks, chopping wood, LXM waiting for anyone to come up here. Now, FPX, Wu Chen coming flying up, trying to salvage this situation, trying to secure that second place for that juicy 1.4 multiplier. Can he do what you does and survive all the way to the end? He's found his way into the nook and cranny, but going on to this end game, it's looking like this is cinched up from Team GG, sir. We lost KLA into those rounds, 17S uh, being able to get caught out to the last remaining person. But one crazy thing about this, SS is just hiding this one out. 521 has been doing such a great job as these last seconds into this round happens. You can see Yen was able to utilize his V3 and just trying to lock this down. Has F3 available, but he's getting locked from CJS from GG as the way shot, putting the pressure. Yen at below 400, below 200, below 100. The zone is the finisher off of what his lifespan is going to remain. But you can see SS is looking for that soul bloom. He finds it. He's got gold pole sword action. He can go ahead and find 
find that Tessa enchant that cannot be found between all of these boxes and CGS is just trying to lock down the remaining combatants from 5 to 1. Unique having this opportunity of being able to find that Wuchen port is going to look for that repositioned spot, but he still gets caught out. The Farious Shen is not going to care about that. 330 is locking this one in. 330 finds a kill off of Unique. We're going to see LX7 finding out against a USS, and this is where GG just came out on top overall, Raven, and that's going to end out round three.